OnlyFans and cold plunges. Put them together and what do you get? An hour of content for any podcast in 2023. It seems like this year, if you take one man and any other man and put them in a room with two microphones, they'll end up on one of these two topics. And it's great. I think generally an exchanging of ideas is a really good concept. Except for lately, when I see clips of these interviews online, I feel like I get the sense that they all think one thing. OnlyFans, bad. Women, bad. OnlyFans women, super bad. If any young women are watching, please do not model your lifestyle after her. Thank you very much. And all of this just left me with a lot more questions than answers. There's a genuine discussion to be had about the mental health of OnlyFans creators and any social media content creator. So I wanted to go out and find people that had real thoughts and experiences on the platform. So I asked my community over on Twitch for a little bit of help and I sat down with a few creators that used to or are currently making OnlyFans content. And this is what they had to say. My name is Audie. I did OnlyFans for about six to seven months. I am a Twitch streamer. My name is Kaya but I go by Sour Diesel Babe. Well, I started as an asphyxiation, but that gave me a couple bumps in the road because of the terms of service and the asphyxiation joke. Now I go by Turley, actually Dirty Turley. In your own words, how would you say that people view OnlyFans creators or people on that site? Um, I feel like it definitely varies depending on who you ask. Some people don't view it as an actual job per se. Uh, some people view it as just a regular like on the same uh level as like going to a nine to five um yeah it's definitely not something that is the first thing i put on my page one when you meet me but like in my personal life i am not ashamed of it and i love to talk about it not everybody has this standpoint but i feel like sex work and like politics go hand in hand, especially because most of the time sex workers are working with politic politicians. It's just something that I want to normalize as much as I can. And I actually had the goals of becoming a sex therapist. General population kind of views us as sluts. We're just viewed in a very negative light, uh, except the people who enjoy our content. Most of them view us as beautiful goddesses, but people outside of viewing our content they're not too nice not too pleasant very much yes, but you asked for it kind of thing what is your association with the word slut it's just a woman and it's okay to be a slut sometimes like i sometimes say that i'm very slutty but i'm proud of that uh my best friend's very slutty we're proud of that it's not a derogatory term unless you use it like it. I mean, you have people negatively reacting, whether it be friends, family, or just random people on the internet. Um, some people, it seems like, search out sex workers just to put them down on platforms like Twitter, Instagram, anywhere that people promote. Um, people will come out and just start throwing out insults, saying you're not doing real work, um, things of that nature. So it's definitely got its ups and downs, but there's, yeah, there's a lot of people that do that. Were you already creating content before you went into OnlyFans or was it just that was like your first foray into creating content on the internet and dealing with like trolls and, and things like that? Um, I actually sold content prior to doing OnlyFans. I sold like individual photos and videos straight to people. My sister made me a Facebook and like I had an Instagram. I know a lot of people get hit up in their DMs all the time. I don't really respond to Instagram DMs. Roughly 10, 12 years ago, 10 or 11 years ago, right? Like right when I turned 18, I'd have people hit me up and just start flirting with me. And I would be like, yo, I'll send you some pictures if you send me some dough. So walk me through some of the process when you were deciding to go on to OnlyFans fans you mentioned like some people had suggested it what were some of the pros and cons in your head to making that move and when you started selling content in the first place what was some of that decision making process like for you when i started selling content it was kind of um something that i had always wanted to do because i was always very confident in my body and my shape and everything and i liked showing it off so i kind of had that mental debate of okay my family couldn't know and only certain friends could know but i still wanted to make money off of it and be able to promote myself it was you know like okay how do i hide my tattoos how do i you know hide my face things like that a lot more cons than pros i don't know just sexy people it uh, tends to and flirting like flirting is kind of my forte i love mm. flirting but when it's with people i don't want to flirt with i'm like this is this is where it becomes transactional <laughs> kind of funny story um it was slightly in protest to my partner at the time that was being very um controlling and just very uh counterintuitive to what i had expressed um we were just breaking up and so 
so I was like, fuck it. Um, I have no problem. Like, I'm very comfortable. I wouldn't call myself a nudist per se, but like if I can find a space to be comfortable and naked in, like I just want to be there. I started out with my Instagram and just people would message me, tell them pictures. And then they were like, hey, you should start an OnlyFans. So I did. So I started out already with like a clientele and then switched it over. So were you in a relationship at the time that you started? I was. And that was difficult, but I was. Yes. How, how was that decision making process? And was there a lot of pushback to you doing something like that? Actually, the quite opposite. Just, I don't care. Do what you want. Leave me alone. I don't care. If you want to do that, that's fine. And then it was very distant. And then it was the not talking. And then he didn't like it, but he didn't want to tell me he didn't like it. It went downhill. He was okay. He wasn't okay with it. He was just, he didn't care. I was in a relationship at the time and he was very supportive of it. He actually kind of talked me into doing it. He was like, look, it's, you know, it's just more money for you. You can go spoil yourself that way. Cause I was very very careful with my money and I was pretty much just bills and savings. That's all I ever did. So he was like, hey, if you do this, you'll have more money to actually spend on yourself and buy yourself nice things, do things for yourself that you don't normally do as opposed to just living day to day, not spending any money on myself. I've dated just the once since I started. Um, I pretty much wanted to be single after that relationship because right. everything was so bumpy. I am in my second relationship right now. We are very adult. It's really, it's just about finding partners that are communicative, just in, in general. Like that's my standard for everyone around me. It's like, you have to be able to, to like know yourself and know maybe not what you want in the moment. You know how to step back and like come back and reiterate that later. It ended up being pretty pretty lucrative and did you did you take care of yourself after that i did i bought a lot of boots <laughs> Was it quite a bit more lucrative than doing it privately? Like having OnlyFans as a way to kind of promote yourself on that platform? So to be completely honest, I made more money selling content privately than I did through OnlyFans because I felt like nobody's going to pay 10 to $15 for a subscription. So I had to bump it down to like, I think I had it like $5. Mm -hmm. And that's for all this content. Whereas I was charging 10 to 15 for a single picture before. So in retrospect, do you think that you could have probably charged more and made more? Or were you just pretty happy with where it was at? I was pretty happy with where it was at because I was still selling individual content while I was running my OnlyFans. Oh, well then you were set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to go. It can be very lucrative, but it can also be bone dry. If you are consistent with it and you put out good content and you also advertise your content, oh yeah, you could be bringing in thousands of dollars a month. But if you don't do it consistently and you don't advertise it, you're gonna maybe get 20, 30, $40 a month. You're still gonna get something if you're posting content because obviously you have subscribers and paid messages and stuff like that. But you really have to put in the hard work. It's just like any other job. Just like with streaming, it's all about dedication. Like I heard you say before, you just have to like to become it, you have to put all of it into it. Um, I haven't been doing that recently, but when I was doing that, I was getting it back. When you're active and involved in making content and you are involved with your community and looking for new communities to put yourself into and networking with people, you very much so will find a niche for whatever it is you're doing on OnlyFans, uh, be it intimate, sexy um, stuff, or it being feet stuff, or I'm sure there's a armpit place i don't you know i haven't looked up Probably that so. specifically um my current partner is really into licking my armpit so i'm pretty sure it's a thing i stopped because it actually started um affecting my mental pretty bad i didn't necessarily feel i don't want to say i didn't feel safe but it was kind of just like i reached a point where i was like okay i i just couldn't do it anymore do you think that it was just like burnout from existing on a social media platform was it something specific to that type of work that was that was affecting you so i think it was back on the mentally taxing you have to come up with new things to do when it comes to that type of thing because nobody wants to see the same thing over and over and over again so that kind of falls into the spending money on lingerie, toys, things of that nature, trying to figure out, okay, what can I do that'll set me apart from other content creators and make people want to continue paying for this? Because I was more so like, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really want to put in all that work to, um, 
kind of spice things up and there were things that I weren't comfortable showing. I didn't show my uncovered bottom region um, because I just wasn't, that was my, that was my safe space. I didn't really want anybody to see that, especially not just like anybody that, you know, came from Twitter or wherever else. So it was definitely hard because a lot of content creation, what gets people more following is showing that type of thing, the playing things like that. And I just wasn't really comfortable doing that. So in social media platforms in general, even like safe for work ones, TikTok and YouTube, there is sort of a competitive environment. Do you feel like there's a lot of pressure for you to do more and more and show more and more? And were you receiving that kind of feedback from people that were subscribing? Yes, absolutely. Um, I got a lot of, well, this creator does this. Why don't you do this? Definitely compared to other content creators, uh, mostly for or not showing certain areas of my body. And it was really harsh because I set that boundary and people were just trying to bulldoze it by saying, well, I can get this kind of content over here. Why don't you do that? There's definitely peer pressure. There's a lot of, you know, some fetishes that guys or even some females are like, hey, I want you to do this. I'll pay you, you know, $2,000 to do this. But it is something that you're just really not comfortable with. And yeah, I've had that happen where I just, hey, I don't want to post something like that or I don't want to do that. And they'll push and push and push and you just have to stay strong and nope, I'm not going to do that. Like my boundary is I don't do in-person sex, mainly because I live in the middle of nowhere. So it's a long travel for me to go somewhere, but also because I do have a partner. I do. I am still respectful. No in-person sex, but I have had people... I'll pay 2000 3000 I had one guy offer like 11000 an STD test. He's like, I'm clean and here's eleven grand." And I was like, that's nice and all, but I have a boyfriend. I have that boundary. I respect that boundary. And I do not cross any boundary that I set. Has it affected any of your like platonic relationships in your life for better or for worse? Yeah, I mean, it does happen no matter what. Um, people talk. Once some people in town found out, it definitely got around the community and... I'm not going to get into details, but there was like a minor dra dramatic situation that happened that again, once you talk to people who were told the stories and clear things up, like um, drama gets snipped in the bud really quickly on my end. Um, if anybody knows me, for sure. Yeah, that's easily, I don't know what everybody says behind everybody's back. And I don't necessarily care either. It doesn't actually affect me. I have very like clear boundaries, not strict boundaries, but very, very definite clear hey if we're friends we're platonic if i don't want us to be platonic you'll know i'm also such an open book i honestly don't mind my friends seeing it um me and my friends go to vegas quite often and we're running around a hotel room naked so we don't really care very much so it hasn't affected us i know some people it does affect them but in my personal experience no issues with my friends. Um, it was definitely interesting having friends know about it because I knew as a woman having mostly male friends, I knew most of them wanted to see me in that way. So I was like, okay, do I want to overstep that line strictly platonic and be like, hey, here's my ass, you know, just like show them the more intimate parts of myself because for a long time I had to set strict boundaries of, hey, like, this is a friendship, this is all that this is, to opening up a market of, hey, I could make money off of you. And it's kind of looking back on it, a little bit of a selfish point of view, but I mean, they wanted it, you know, they they wanted to see that. And I was like, hey, here's your wildest dream coming true right now. But it definitely, one friendship in particular, it kind of messed with it a lot because he kept pushing a boundary and it got to a point where he was asking if he could pay me for physical interactions. And it just, it made me very uncomfortable because he wasn't someone that I saw in that way at all. And I was okay with like, hey, you know, send me 10 bucks, I'll send you a picture, that's fine. Like, whatever. And then it just kind of progressed more and more. And I would try to set boundaries. And I ended up um, having to distance myself from him because I was so uncomfortable and trying to state, hey, I'm uncomfortable with this 
didn't matter. And you had a job at the time, right? What were you what were you doing? I was an electrical apprentice. So, I mean, that seems to me like it's probably a fairly male dominated industry. Did people at your job know about it? Were they subscribers? Originally, I kept my sex work life and my day job separate because I knew, OK, this is a very male dominated industry and I did not want to be seen different because it was already hard having to go into work every day and prove myself to be worthy of being there simply for the fact that I was a female. It's It makes me mad even thinking about it now. Um, it did get found out and the president of the company that I worked for found out about it. I was then treated extremely differently. I wasn't trusted to do anything. They treated me as though I was dumb, that I didn't know how to do anything. And I was overly sexualized by other uh, companies and other, other trades because everybody on the job site talked. So it spread like a wildfire. And soon after, I actually found out that the president of my company said that if I claimed any sexual harassment, that I would immediately be fired. So I am a diesel mechanic and I am a maternity vet tech. Are there a lot of female and or OnlyFans creators in the diesel mechanic industry? In the industry, yes because it is a very easy environment mm -hmm. to get guest co-stars. Um, my personal shop that I worked for, no, I was the only female. I was the only female they had ever hired. They knew that I had an OnlyFans because one of my coworkers found it on accident. He decided to tell everybody. So finally I was just like, yeah, I have an OnlyFans. The boss didn't care, no one else cared. It was kind of just that first initial shock of, Willard's got, got an OnlyFans, like what? But then it was no big deal. My maternity vet tech job though at a dairy, yes, that was a big issue. They were very, very religious and did not approve of anything outside of marriage. My boss's husband found my OnlyFans. Don't know why he was on there. He claims he just stumbled upon it. He found it. He decided to not tell his wife that he found it and continue looking at it until one night his wife found him looking at my, my profile and I was promptly fired. It all depends on your boss and who you work for. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. So you had said that your mom knew about it. Did you tell her right away or was it something that she found out about or how did that go down? Yeah, I was really excited to tell her. So I just told her and we we come from a line of just uh, matriarchals. Uh, so like grandma was the one and then she passed away and now it's mom. And then my sister unfortunately had a stroke slash aneurysm like six, seven years uh, or eight or nine years ago now. But um, so it'll probably be me after mom passes. But yeah, we really just we really try to be really positive with each other. My Surprisingly enough, my sister and I are on bad footing right now, but um, we have this saying in my family that uh, I will always love you even when I don't like you. As a creator and as a woman on, on Twitch and other social media platforms, do you still like you feel kind of get that pressure to do things like OnlyFans or maybe show more or wear a certain thing? Absolutely. I, um, I've had people come into my chat and comment on my body, comment on because I wear somewhat revealing clothing when I stream sometimes just because it's my more dress up clothing and I, I can't help the way that my body is shaped but I've had people come in and immediately just start talking about my body asking if I have an OnlyFans really just objectifying me for the simple fact that I am a female and I am not bad looking you know so if you were talking to somebody that's considering starting an OnlyFans what's something that you would want them to know um I would definitely tell them set your own boundaries and make sure you stick to those never do anything that you're not comfortable with because at the end of the day nobody can force you to do anything you don't want to do you set your own rules and you stick to them there is something for everybody and as long as you have your um pillars the pillars of you and your community like you have your bestie and your backup bestie and like just have like three or four backup besties as long as you have like a good sturdy amount of people to rely on when you're having a bad day or to like um, bounce some ideas off of. I think it's a great lucrative career. And if that's what you wanna do, go for it. Just remember, you are a badass. There is always someone that will buy what you sell. And also as somebody that is a creator and in a relationship that seems to be going pretty well, what would you say to somebody that might be in a relationship and maybe their partner isn't so keen on the idea or you know maybe they just need to have that conversation? What advice would you have? Well, if it's just not going as great as 
was mine. Um, I would say work on it, uh, create a space at the table to talk about it. Um, and if that space isn't able to be created, then maybe consider um, consider finding a, a new partner. Definitely communication. Communication is key. If you don't have any communication in a relationship, whether you're doing OnlyFans or not, it's gonna fail without without any communication. And setting boundaries. Have you know your partner say, "Hey, I don't like it if you do this," or "I don't like it if you do that," and you stick to those boundaries. You know if he had told me hey i don't want you sending these kind of pics i wouldn't so it's very much communications boundaries sticking to it but also you have to have personal time between the two of you also go on dates make sure you guys maybe cook dinner together just something to keep you guys together as a couple and strong because if one crack breaks it's gonna crack the whole thing so just keep it glued together communication and just trust your partner too as a whole is there anything that you would want people to know not necessarily creators but just the general public about OnlyFans creators a lot of us do it for the money we may not do it for the attention or the sexual attraction you know it's very much for the money it is a good business to be in if you do it correctly and a lot of us actually all of us are human you know it may not be the perfect video you know, we may miss a day or we just don't feel like making content that day you know we have bad days too and a lot of people that i have spoken to who know about only fans they think that we just go, 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 constantly making content, constantly horny and being sexual. And that's not true in, in my case. I mean, it's pretty basic. We're people too. We have hella interests. Like We have all kinds of things we do. We have families, we have animals. When I just saw the bad interview that made me want to do this interview, um, it's like, you can ask us so many things like, you know, couple sex work things, of course, but like, you know, what's my favorite game? What game got me started? Cause I'm, I'm a gamer and that's all over my profiles, but like just for, just for people treating us like people, it's not that hard. Um, we're all around you every day. <laughs> we're probably walking by you at the grocery store where people you definitely don't like the, the standard of, um, somebody working in porn or sex work is, is ridiculous. There is no standard. Um, there's mainstream porn and then there's all the other porn that everybody consumes. But yeah, we're just people, we just have little interests and we just want to be as nerdy as we can be like me or just left alone like everybody else. You want to tell the people where you can be found so they can go support you in, in what you're doing now? I'm on Twitch. My Twitch is Menningsloss. My personal life is Turley Shumple on Instagram and my side life on Instagram is Dirty Turley and then same on OnlyFans is Dirty Turley. Sour Diesel Babe or Instagram Sour Diesel Babe. The Sour Diesel Babe on pretty much everything. So after talking to everybody, I kind of reached the same idea that I had before. It's kind of like any other social media or any job that you have. There's going to be some people that love it and some people that hate it. Not just the creators themselves, but the people around them, friends, family, partners. I think that it's important to have a conversation like this, especially when you have the idea that people can go and make a lot of money on these platforms. It's important to inform them of the positives and the negatives that that might come with. So I want to say thank you to the women that I sat down with today for giving me their genuine opinion on it. I don't want to keep anybody from starting in this industry, but I also don't want to convince them either. And that's what it seems like a lot of these podcasts are trying to do. Advocates want you to do it, and naysayers want you to stay the hell away from it. But like most things, it's a gray area. But let me know what you think in the comments. I don't know everything. I hardly know anything. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to become instantly dummy thick. It'll happen, I promise. I'm really interested in having interviews like this with other people in different industries, from male OnlyFans creators to Walmart employees. So if there's an industry or somebody that you feel hasn't had their voice heard enough, let me know and I'll consider making a video about it. That's all and as always, okay bye.